Welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share what I know is a powerful now word for this hour. We are seeing heaven and earth being shaken. And many of you are experiencing your whole life being turned upside down. It's like um, the very earth is melting underneath us. Issues, the attacks of the enemy is coming up with attacks that almost go after the heart. The cost, the, the heartbreak as he attacks and tries to steal our children, our loved ones. He's attacking our cities, our nations. I mean, it's an all out attack of the enemy. And now more than ever, we need to know in the midst of all this, um, how to remain in the sacred place, in that place of being kept in his perfect peace, that perfect joy, so that we can stand strong and see the salvation of our God. Because we are anointed and appointed for such time as this. But it is a perilous, difficult, dark hour. Now more than ever, we, know, we need to know how to remain in that sacred place. So join with me as I share with you steps on how to remain there with insight from Smith Wigglesworth. This is a meteor message, a deep message. I want to go further. So I encourage you to check out the earlier videos in the series to better understand the secret place so that this is a building block and really is aimed at this hour where we're seeing an acceleration of the birth pangs, uh, where they are gaining intensity and frequency as we go, uh, draw closer, of course, to the Lord's return. But at the same time, we're seeing an onslaught of attacks of the enemy. But what we've got to understand that in the secret place, the grace is provided and that we are called and that God expects us because it's our inheritance to be found in the secret place. I ask, Father God, that you would speak to us and reveal to us a word in season. We lift you up. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the finished work of the cross. We come and declare a dependence upon you, Jesus. I declare, Jesus, that you're Lord. And I thank you, Father God, right now by the Holy Spirit. Open our eyes to see, ears to hear. And give us such a revelation of the cross, of what you did, Jesus. And let us lift you up that all men will be drawn unto you as we walk out this hour, giving you glory, abiding, permanently residing in the secret place of the Most High God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus and the church said, Amen. Now we're building upon Psalm, of course, 91, that he who dwells in the secret place, he who dwells, he who has made that residence. And the residence, of course, is going to be challenged in this hour where the enemy is going after mindshare. He's coming after you with cares, worries, and concerns. He's coming after you with, of course, attacks, persecution, because he wants to go after the seed of the soil and of course to cause that seed to be choked and not produce the fruit that it's supposed to do god wants you to bear fruit in this hour to occupy till he comes and we are called to bear much fruit i assure you as you spend the time and reside in the secret place you're kept and your heart is surrounded in this hour where there's so many texts i mean they're cutting close to the heart they they are painful and difficult and so we need to know how to stand strong. Now, uh, in, let me just go back one second. As we dwell in the secret place, we abide under the shadow in that microclimate of his perfect love, his peace kept by him under his authority, under his leadership and under his protection. And we discover that in Psalm 17, 8, keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. Here again, we come under the shadow of the wings, where in the secret place you discover that as you gaze upon him, that you are the apple of his eye. And as you gain a revelation of that, as you face these attacks, there is a confidence because I know how he sees me, how he loves me, and therefore I will not fear. In Psalm, sorry, Isaiah 6, 26, 20, Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until the fury has passed by. We need to be kept in this hour, in that secret place. We need to be found in an hour where we're warned to be sober, be alert, and be careful that we're not deceived because there's such a deception on the earth that even the elect would be deceived. But we can be kept in Him, in that place where we're found and we're counted worthy to escape the things coming, where we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might and be victorious even in the midst of the darkest hour. This is the place where we arise and shine because there's glory that's coming upon us. 
as the place, as we arise and shine, where we will see our sons and our daughters returning. We're going to see the breakthroughs because God is not done. Listen, the devil's making a whole lot of noise and trying to paint such a picture that it's all over. But God is about to arise, and we, as we hide ourselves in Him, as He arises, He is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and He's about to demonstrate His great power on this earth and bring in a harvest, but He wants to work with us. And so my first step, the first key that I'm going to share with you is that we have to learn how to ask. Do you know that God expects of us to ask? If we could get a revelation of the love the Father has for us, that He's a good Father, and that He desires to give good gifts to His children because of His love. And out of that love, He wants to demonstrate it. And because of our love towards Him, you know, there's something powerful in a love relationship when there's ability to ask. That God has raised you to such a place in Christ that He wants and desires that you ask. Um, Smith Wigglesworth said this, up to this present time, the Lord's word is for us. Here to you have asked nothing. Now we've got to get a revelation. We have not asked and understood the importance of asking because we've been so taught uh, of this false religious humility that we don't understand the fullness of the love message and of the goodness of God and how he desires to work with us, especially in this hour, and the need to ask. You have not because you asked not. Let me share some verses with you. 1 John 4, 21. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. Have you come to know and believe that love that God has for you? And so when the enemy challenges it in that dark hour, where it's such an issue that's so big, so great, I mean, it cuts so close, it hurts. Your very world has crumbled. Your strength is drained. And yet you have come to know and believe the love of God and know that in the midst even of the earth shaking, the mountains be removed, you can trust in the Lord your God. And you know and have such a confidence that He is more than able, that He is such a good God and He cares for you. You know His love and care for you and for your family, for your loved ones. And He said this, whoever abides in love abides in God and abides in Him. We want to abide in that love. And God calls you to walk in love, abide in love, and as we spend time in the secret place, we become overwhelmed by it. We become, because as He is, so too are we in this world. And how can two walk together unless they come into agreement? We humble ourselves, which we've talked about, and we humble ourselves under His royal command of love, and it gets in us, and it begins to come forth through us. And the challenges of this hour are, of course, to attack your love walk, to offend you, to hurt you, so that you stop your love walk. And every time you miss it, get quick, quickly back in. Get quickly under the blood and get your love walk up. We need to be walking in love in this hour. And in fact, we discover in 1 John that John defines love, that if we walk in love, we do not hate. And the enemy is so filled with hate and he wants to cause you to hate. He wants to get you bitter. He wants to get you mad and overflowing with hate. And secondly, the love of the world is not in you. We are not driven by the lust and desires of the world. And that's the other area the enemy goes after, to distract you with lust and desires. And we need to understand that as we abide in this place of love, we now ask out of love, understanding His goodness and the greatness of His heart, that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. So I can ask, and I know that as I ask, He has the perfect gift. And he so wants to impart with us and desire to stir in us that desire to ask and the call to ask. Look at this in Zechariah 10, 1. Ask rain from the Lord at the time of the spring rain. The Lord who makes the storm clouds and he will give you them showers of rain, vegetation in the field to each man. So God wants to bless you. God wants to demonstrate that love but he's asking us to ask. And we discover that as well in the Our Father. So we're to cry out and ask, Thy kingdom come, that will be done. We discover in the life of Jesus, he with loud cries and tears, he made no petitions to the Father who was able to save him. That love drives us to the one that we know we can trust, the one we can have confidence in, and that we can ask. You don't have to walk in fear because perfect love casts out all fear. And so I have the ability and a confidence and lack of fear to ask, knowing how good He is. 
And as I ask, that rain begins to pour in my heart, changes me, changes my circumstances. And I get a hold of the bigger purpose of heaven that God desires a move on the earth. And he wants to work with us. He wants to use us and partner with us. And he's asking us to pray and ask so that his will is done in this hour. Our breakthrough is in our mouth that we will learn to ask according to the very heart and purpose of the Father. The next step I want to say is we need an awakening. And that comes as we ask for that rain to pour on me, to pour on each one of us, to soften this heart so that the word now has such an impact to change me. And I'm now sensitized once again. I'm soft again because an awakening is not for the dead. An awakening and a revival is for those that are almost dead. Those that are asleep, those that have lost sensitivity to the Father and to the Holy Spirit. We need this hour to be sensitive. We need to be able to hear His voice now more than ever. We need everything that's hindering, blocking, standing away, removed. And that needs an awakening. We need a divine assault in our lives by the Holy Spirit. Smith said, I deal with many things on the line of spiritual awakening, for this is needed this day. This is the day of needed spiritual waking. Not so much a knowledge of salvation, but a knowledge of waking in salvation. Knowing who you are, knowing your rights, knowing that you are a son and daughter, knowing the very benefits of salvation and how you can walk in them in this hour so the world sees it, so the world can see you as a living witness of the victory won on the cross, of the fullness of salvation being manifested and demonstrated in and through you, that Jesus being lifted up and glorified, the Lord our Savior. The seed of the Lord Jesus Christ is mightily in you, which is the seed of purifying, a seed of truth and knowledge, a seed of life-giving, a seed of transforming, a seed of building another person in the body till the body that bears that seed only lives to contain that body which the seed has made until that comes forth with glorious light and power. Now, we can understand that in the secret place, God wants to infuse into you His DNA so that you begin to think like Him, walk like Him, talk like Him to pour into you his faith so that we walk in a new way, a spiritual person, walking according to the spiritual order. God wants to so change you so that you're no longer impacted by the natural. See, the enemy wants to draw you back into the natural realm where you're held captive by your emotions, your feelings. But God says, I'll lift you up to this place where you walk by the Spirit and you recognize and see things from a spiritual perspective. And so when the enemy is attacking, you can see the God's care and his hand and hold fast to your Lord God and know that he's bigger and he's Lord. And you face a defeated foe who's making a whole lot of noise. But Jesus is greater. And Jesus has a plan, sees the future, knows all things, and has already made all full provision if you will simply come and ask. But we need to be awakened to learn how to walk in the Spirit in this hour. We have to learn how to walk in and by the Spirit now more than ever. Smith, no, oh, hallelujah. Smith said this, that I may, he's quoting from Paul, I may quote this from Paul, okay? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So in this place of awakening, there is a crucifixion of the old because in me there's such a desire as I'm awakened. God, I'm going after you as Paul desired. I desire to know you and to be found in you. There's such a pursuit in me because in this hour, God, I recognize the darkness of what's going on and I need you more than ever. If we don't get a hold of the need for him, we're going to begin to backslide and be caught. We need to understand our own depravity, our own lack, and say, God, I need you. And I must remain in the secret place, clinging to you, going after you, because life in this moment in time depends upon it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 4 through 6, But brethren, um, you are not in darkness, um, that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are not of, sorry, for you are sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. Because you're not called, you're not part of the dark hour, you're called to be the sons and daughters of light. And that where you walk, you walk in light because of his glory upon you, because of him who's with you. He is the light of the world and he is with you, he's in you. And God wants to reveal that light through you, through this frail, 
earthen vessel. Oh, if we could get our eyes off our frail earthen vessel and on Him and allow Him to use this frail earthen vessel to demonstrate how He is Lord, even in the midst that God can take something frail, broken, something weak, and use something and do it powerfully and do something above and beyond because He's the God of wonders. He's a miracle-working God, and He wants to demonstrate that in this world, in this generation, through frail earthen vessels. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. We all know this. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will rise upon you. God is an equal opportunity discriminator. And he will, those that will choose to walk by faith, He will discriminate on their behalf. All you've got to do is choose to walk by faith and trust Him, because He we must first believe He is, and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And He rewards, and He wants to demonstrate, He wants His glory to fall on you in an hour where the world's getting darker, because the world needs to see a demonstration of righteousness and light, a witness. Number three, we must be transformed. And as you awaken, the next step God wants to do and get you to understand is that you need to be changed. We need to be transformed. We cannot conform to this world, but we must be renewed in the renewing of our mind and be transformed by the Spirit as we reside and remain in the secret place. And the enemy is going to try to unplug you through trials and tribulations and tests and difficulties to get mind share and to get you to doubt or be discouraged, offended. But if you hold fast and remain in that secret place, locked in with God, He will demonstrate His goodness and you will come to know His love. Smith said this, If you will only dispose of yourself in a short time, for it is nothing but yourself that will hinder you, dispose of your human mind, dispose of your human measure, dispose of your strength, dispose of all you have. It is a big word for me to say, and let inspiration take whole charge of you, bring you out of yourself into the power of God. It may be today that God shall transform you into another man as you've never seen before. And God really wants to take you and so mold you and make of you something so radically different. And all the things you've been struggling with to bring you as you abide and reside and remain. And the wonderful thing is that as you go through this trial where everything's been challenged, you say, God, I choose you and I go after you. You release into your life that transforming power. You bring yourself into a wonderful place where God begins to do something. There's no going back because you've been tested and now I choose you, God. And all of a sudden, God brings forth through you such a radically different person that the world looks and cannot comprehend it. And that's what God wants to do as He prepares for Himself a church without spot or wrinkle. And God's working in us. He's shaking the foundations to bring us to an unshakable kingdom. And that's as we reside in the secret place. There's a confidence there. There's an assurance. So it said this, All the saints of God that get the real vision of this wonderful transformation of the body are seeing that every day the world is getting worse and worse and worse and ripening for judgment. And so there's many people that are being caught in the world because they don't want to be changed. They're enjoying the world. And they don't realize that the water is slowly getting warmer. Like a frog put into the pot, the water is slowly turning up the heat. And we don't recognize. But we who are being changed and transformed in, as we reside and remain in the secret place are becoming more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Changed. And we're seeing things from a different perspective according to the very Spirit and the Holy Spirit showing us truth and keeping us. And as a consequence, we recognize as we look at the Word and we look at what's going on, we discern the times and we understand that the world's getting darker, riper for judgment. Therefore, we must separate. And therefore, we must preach this gospel like never before. Smith said this, And we've heard the Word come rushing through all over. New theology, that damnable, devilish, evil power that lived in some of these disobedient children, which in these last days opened the doors to the next thing. A new theology was born in infidel, infidelity, in atheism, and they opened the door, which is full of false prophecy. And we have all these people that give all these wonderful prophetic words that come purely from brain tissue and not from heaven. 
There's no accountability, and they don't line up and are not tested with the Word. They're not honoring because there is no other gospel. There's one gospel, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we've got to come back to that gospel and stop hearing a gospel that makes me feel good. A gospel that it's all okay. It's not. It's getting darker. And now more than ever, you need to reside. You need to walk holy. You need to walk right before the Lord. We need to be changed. We need to be purified. We need to get real with the Lord and allow Him to get real with us. This, we do not recognize that the sin that we embrace today becomes the stronghold that captivates us tomorrow. What you are today is what you'll be, be tomorrow. And everything we release and receive in our lives today either blesses us or curses us tomorrow. So let us understand that we need to sow into our spirit man. We need to be strong in the Lord because we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know regarding our families, our loved ones, our finances, our jobs, anything. The world is shaking and everything is not looking good. There's all these things on the horizon that are historical. They're above and beyond. And you cannot, not a, most of us don't have the resources to properly prepare. And even if you do, how can you stop your children going astray? How can you prevent certain things happening? You can't. But in the secret place, you can have a hold of God and have your breakthrough and have a perfect peace and know that He is in control and that He is always working all things for good for those who love Him. But what does false prophecy do? False prophecy always makes a way out. The moment it did not come to pass, they say they were mistaken in dates. They change. They, they move the finishing line. And we cannot bow to false prophecy. We bow to the authority of the Word. In this hour, you cannot live based on prophetic utterances or on experiences. They can bless us and they can be generally good. But our lives are built upon the Word. Our lives are built upon hearing and doing the Word, where we take the Word as we receive revelation by the Holy Spirit, mix it with faith, and we do it. And day after day, we personally go into the secret place and go after the Lord. See, we always want to get the shortcut. We always want that little secret that we can avoid the, the price, the pain uh, to get in. But we look at Jesus and the church of Laodicea that was doing good works. And he said, buy from me gold. And we see, of course, the, the ten virgins, the five foolish, the five wise, and the five foolish going to try to buy. But it was too late. And there comes a moment where it's simply too late. And we don't know what tomorrow will bring. So don't put off and do it today. Go after because this is the day of salvation. Now is the moment that we are to pursue Him and be found in Him. The next thing we must be is children of the truth. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons, by means of the hypocrisy of liars, seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron. And we live in an hour where people's opinions are so strong and they say, well, we've, we've worked it all out. We, we know what we're talking about. And they don't. And we have people that are willing to lie because they're more moved by an agenda and they don't care about those they hurt or the damage they do because they're moved by their agenda, which they claim is for the greater good. No, it's for their greater good. And there's only one truth that we need to understand, and that's the truth of the Word. God's Word was forever established in the eternal past. And God upholds all things by the Word. The Word of His power, the Word of truth. He upholds it all, and He can uphold your life. His Word doesn't change. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happens politically. It doesn't matter. His Word remains the same. And he knows the infinite future. And he knows what's coming. He knows the timing. There's nothing that takes him by surprise. Knowing all that, knowing the very heart, he knows inside and out. And he said, this is truth. Well, I don't know if I understand. We don't, come, we don't understand it mentally. We need in the secret place as we reside there and remain there, particularly when we're challenged, allow the Holy Spirit to open us, to show us and to teach us. Smith said, the spirit of this age is to get you to believe a lie. If you believe a lie, you cannot believe the truth. When once you have see, become seasoned with a lie against the word of God, he sends you a strong delusion that you should believe a lie. And right now we have so many people that are receiving the lie. 
and they will choose to believe the lie over the word. And they're so convinced of the lie, even when you show them facts and figures, even when you show them data points, it doesn't matter. Many people have challenged me on certain subjects and they said, well, this is scientific. And I've said, look, I am a scientist and I have met scientists. Let me show you another opinion on that because true science looks at all the opinions. No, 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 this is fact. Science doesn't always declare fact. They declare theories as they try to explain data. God does not declare theories. God declares fact. We work in a world where we talk about relative, relative results. God works in absolute. And we are being conditioned and programmed based on relative results, where God works on the absolute, the absolute truth, the absolute results. And he can tell you absolutely this absolutely works. So we need to receive that. In Revelation 3.10, because you've kept the word of my perseverance. You've kept it. And there's never been an hour where we've been challenged. Do you trust in the word? Do you rely on the word? Particularly when you are being shaken, when your circumstances are coming against you and the enemy is saying, look, I've got the victory. I've stolen your children. I've done this. I've done that. Do you stand and say, no, my God is bigger. I reside in the secret place and the blessings and the rights of Psalm 91 are mine. All the blessings of the, those that dwell in the secret place are mine and I'm kept. My God is bigger. He is Lord. And when I recognize he's Lord, everything is subject. And as I humble myself and declare in my life, in my circumstance, I humble myself under the authority of God, and therefore I can walk with authority, and therefore my circumstances will bow to his authority. And when it comes to the word of God, the seed of the word of God is the life of the word, and you are the living, the, sorry, and you are living the life of the word of God, and are tremendously transformed all the time by the word of the Lord. That word carries within it life. It is a seed when it's sown on the heart. And when we protect the heart in the secret place by residing, and particularly in the midst of a challenge and a trial where your world gives way and the mountains, everything you trusted in, are shaken and fall into the sea, you do not fear but trust your God. That takes a whole lot of confidence in God that it comes from residing permanently in the secret place. Don't wait till the trial comes, but today go after. Today, day after day, build this thing. Build that life in the Word. Receive the Word. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal it and receive it and mix faith with it. Trust God. When He says it, He believes. When God says it, God means it. And believe Him. And watch Him perform that Word in your life. In, um, he said this, I wish all in this place would read these words in the first epistle of John. Young men, you are strong and have overcome the wicked one. 1 John 2.14 how did they overcome the wicked one? How do I overcome when my world falls apart? When it's hurting me right to my heart? When the difficulties are so great, it looks like I'm going to fail and fall. How? Smith said, by what? By the word, because he upholds all things. The word is a higher law. And when we understand that and we supply and we submit to the law of the word, the word works. The word cannot fail. And the word produces in us, changes us by the Holy Spirit. I guarantee you that as you spend time in the secret place, as you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you day after day in the Word, you change. You're being transformed. The way you think changes. And you begin to walk in a greater deal of peace, joy, and victory, and liberty. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, liberty. Look back over your life. Look where you were and recognize what the Word has done for you. Recognize how it's brought you how much peace, liberty so far. And he's got so much more for you. And every time we step back, the enemy wants to ensnare us and steal from us our peace and our joy. And so um, he has to get us numb. Do you realize in the world that the enemy has to make you numb through various things so that you don't hear the noise, that you overcome the fear and the discouragement and the depression. But in God's presence, you don't have to be numb. You can actually enjoy life and walk filled with peace and joy and victory, it's totally free. No longer discouraged, filled with depression, but with a joy as you reside and remain in the secret place, even in the midst of the greatest challenges. Oh, the world needs to see that witness in you. The world needs to see that when you are utterly challenged to the core, you stand. Not in your own strength, 
not in your ability or your scheming or trying to make it happen, but in a confidence in the Lord your God. What is the word? The word is the mighty power of the revelation of, to us of the Son of God. And the Son of God is holding all these powers today in the world. So no matter what I see going on, no matter what I may see, and the enemy is saying, oh, look how great, how strong I am. God is Lord, and He's upholding all things, and everything is working towards His perfect plan. He is fully, absolutely in control. And you, as you reside in Him, you remain in that place of joy and peace. Next, number five, receive who you now are in Him. Perhaps one of the greatest challenges that we have is recognizing who we are in Him. And you need in this hour because the enemy wants to go after your identity because when you lose sight of who you are and you fall back, you start to uh, lose that spiritual authority that is given you as we take off the robe that God put on us. Listen to this. God says to us, And patience possess thy soul. How beautiful! Oh, how the enrichment of the presence of the power of the Most High is bursting forth upon our, what is, I shall say, our human frame. Something greater than the human frame. Knowest thou, that, knowest thou not that which is born in thee is greater than anything formed around thee? That greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That is your identity in the secret place. That is your right, your privilege. And so, no matter what's going on, greater is he. Because the enemy wants to say, this is greater. And he's going after such an attack that cuts so deep, shakes your world and says this, that's great. You say, yeah, but this who's abiding in me is greater. And I have a confidence. And I have the God who says, looks, why do the nations rage? Who laughs? And I can get a hold of that joy in the midst of the trial. Because why? My God is on the throne. He has raised me up and seated me with the heavenly places, and I'm passing through. I'm gaining a far surpassing victory. Knowest, not, knowest thou not that he has begotten thee in the very God of power to preserve thee and to bring forth light and truth and cause the vision to be made clear, so that as you abide in the secret place, remain there, particularly in the midst of trial, that God begins to work and demonstrate His power in you so that you come to the place of being strong in the Lord, that no longer are you taken captive, prisoner by the enemy, especially in this hour, but more than that, that God is seeking to make the vision that God has called you, anointed, and appointed you for such a time as this, and how He desires to use you to work through you as a partner on the earth to see his purpose. And he wants to bring a victory. We've been focusing on this. God says, oh, I want to do something bigger. I want to reach your family. I want to reach your city. I want to do something bigger. You've been thinking too small. I want to show you something bigger as you trust in me, as you remain in me, as you hide yourself in this secret place. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. For God, who said, light shall shine out of the darkness, is the one who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. In this frail earthen vessel. And that's what we got to understand. That in this hour, I am a frail earthen vessel. I'm not perfect. Thank God. God has taken, and as I submit in the secret place, this frail earthen vessel. And allow an exchange that I'm not walking anymore in my strength, but I am yielding and allowing His strength in me in this frail earthen vessel. All I got to do is fix my eyes on Him. That I keep my mind set on Him, I am kept in perfect peace. I am secure. I reside because that's my inheritance. That's my right. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is where God wants to visit and meet with you. This is where God will strengthen you and encourage you and build you up. And when I need that that moment of comfort or encouragement in the midst of the trial, this is where he wants to meet with me. So be there where you're supposed to be to, for your day of visitation. Listen to this. The elect of God are those that are pressing forward. Not those that have come to the place where it's all good. I can do whatever I want. And we must be careful that we don't drift from salvation or come to the place where God says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. But because I recognize who I am in the secret place, I'm pressing on, like Paul, that I might know you in the power of your resurrection. There's a desire in me as I see the world getting darker. God, i got to have more of you. 
And he went on to say this, the elect of God cannot hold still. They are always on the wing. Every person that has a knowledge of the elect of God realizes it's important that he presses forward. He cannot endure sin, nor darkness, nor shady things. The elect is so earnest to be elect for God that he burns every bridge behind him. I no longer want to go back. I no longer go back to my own vomit. But I want to press forward. I recognize in every door I want shut. In this hour, everything that would take you back shut, cut off. We cannot afford to allow the enemy to deceive us or draw us backwards. All the things that one time had access to your life that led you to sin, shut down. Because as I said, the sin that you embrace and receive today becomes the stronghold that will captivate you tomorrow. It seems simple. A simple sin, a simple weakness. Oh, it won't hurt me. Yes, it will. And as you reside in the secret place, you become more and more disturbed by these things. You become more aware of them and you don't tolerate them because I am the elect of the Lord. I want to be found in Him. I want when the Lord returns to be found worthy to escape all these things coming on the earth. I want to be a witness occupying. I want when He comes to try and say, Lord, if you had to give me one more day, one more day, this is what I had working on. This is what I was going to do. I'm not seeking to escape. I want to be found busy for the Lord, accomplishing great things. We must recognize the hour. Number six, we look at the sons of Ishakar, and they, by the Spirit of God, had a discerning of the hour and knew what to do. Never has been more important for us to discern the hour and recognize. We have a time where Many believers are beginning to mock the Lord's not coming because they're tolerating sin and they just want to be like the world. And they will argue scripture how we're just going to bring the kingdom of earth on heaven. We're going to change everything, which is absolutely contradictory to the very word of God that says it's going to get darker until Jesus physically returns on the earth and the kingdoms on this earth have become the kingdoms of our God. Someone says, well, the enemy is already bound. Well, if he is, Oh, glory to God, it doesn't look like it. And we're told in the Word that until Jesus returns on this earth, the enemy still has right, and he's still working and operating. He may be defeated foe, but until Jesus comes and binds him and throws him into the pit, it ain't over. And we have to understand that we're called to walk in this world sanctified by the Holy Spirit and the Word, living a life separate unto God, more than conquerors. But we cannot afford to allow any access to the enemy because we recognize the hour. We live in the domain of darkness, okay? Uh, so we, we, we dwell in His kingdom. But this atmosphere is what I'm trying to explain. This atmosphere, in this atmosphere, He still has an authority. We live in a fallen world, and we don't belong to it, and we're here to oppose it, to stand up, to be salt, light, and righteousness, and reach as many people, and to take from that domain as many souls and win them for Jesus by preaching this glorious gospel with the Holy Spirit. We have to see that these days have come before the Lord can come. Sorry, that we have to see that these days have come before the Lord can come. We have to recognize, you know, I look back, in the 80s and we dreamed of the hour that final hour before the Lord returned and none of us could have imagined it would be like it is today and the moral decline how things are accelerating so fast and the bondages the restrictions and everything else coming the persecution globally see it's not a persecution here or there because you can't flee anywhere now it's a global persecution of Christianity we could never have thought this, but these days had to come. And he went on to say, there had to be a falling away. And it's heartbreaking to see how many believers are falling away. But the reality is, were they truly in us? Were they truly belonging to us? Because it's a time for a separating of the tares and the wheat. But it's also time, as we're discovered, for us to pray for the backslidden. There has to be a manifestation in this day so clear of such undeniable fact. And what we're seeing on the earth is that shaking of all things as God is exposing the very heart. God is demonstrating a separation of truth and darkness. And only if you walk in the Spirit will you see it. Otherwise, it's so subtle, you'll miss it. You cannot afford not to abide and remain in the secret place and have your spirit man sharp. You may have to wake up in the middle of the night as the Spirit of God disturbs you and pray. You may have to germ the day, suddenly pray. We cannot afford in this hour. We need to be constantly going after the Lord. Anytime He disturbs you, calls you, 
pray. Anytime he calls you, get in the word. Now more than ever, build your spirit, man. Be strong in the Lord. Build your life upon the word and prayer. He said this, but there shall be things that will happen prior to his coming that we shall know. You can tell. I am like one this morning that is moving with a liquid, holy, indispensable, real fire in my bosom. And I know it is burning and the body is not consumed. It is a real fire from heaven that is making my utterances come to you to know that he is coming. He's on the way. And something should begin to burn in us. We should start to recognize. And I see the general message now touching the body. And I believe it's going to grow. As we're hearing the voice from heaven, the Lord is coming. Awaken. There's a wake-up call beginning to come forth. And let the church arise. Let us receive that fire in our bones, a stirring from heaven, that now is the hour for us to arise, to occupy, and to stand up and be bold for the Lord. He went on to say, Mine is a spiritual acquaintance, bringing to a place of separation, holiness unto God, that you may purify yourselves and be clean, ready for that great day. And so everything should be creating in you a dependency, not upon a ministry or person, but upon God. You need to go after and you need to have it real. Many are falling away in this hour because they have built a life upon dependence on others. They walk before the Lord because they were in fear of a man, fear of a system. And as a consequence, it was not a fear of the Lord. And when that fear is moved or offense comes in, they stumble. And you cannot afford in this hour to live a life built upon a fear that comes from a system. It has to be a righteous, holy fear, reverence, built out of a love of God. And it's a personal, one-on-one relationship with the Lord. You need to have that. You need to develop. It needs to be matured day after day. You need to come to the place where you know and believe in that love. And that love casts out all fear. And you stand secure, maturing in it, growing in it. And finally... We must pray for the church. This is so important. In Joel 2, 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, Lord. Give not thy inheritance a reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, they should say among the people, where is their God? If we don't understand, there's a dominion the world's trying to put on the church worldwide. We live in an hour that's unlike any other time in church history where the world is seeking to, by the enemy's plans and the agendas of men, to bring the church under their dominion. And we cannot bow because we must uh, obey the word. We are going to have to choose the word and choose the perseverance of the word, to keep that word, to trust in him, even at great cost in this hour. I don't know how long we've got. I don't know what we may have to endure or suffer. But let us be found faithful before him. And it means that we need to understand the importance of laying our lives down for one another. We see, of course, in the uh, epistles of Paul, where the brethren was praying. They were in labor. They were birthing. And I want to quote here from Smith. Paul said he travailed in birth. Jesus did the same. John had the same. So, brothers and sisters, may God bless you and make you see that this is a day of travailing for the church of God, that she might be formed so that she is ready for putting on the glorious remnant of heaven forever and ever. Let us be people that travail, understanding that we're in a Gethsemane hour, that the church needs to understand the importance of being groaning and crying out and standing the gap for the brethren that we be formed in Christ, that we go strong in the Lord, that we stand crying out for mercy because we've been so broken by it. We understand where God has lifted us from, even as believers. And out of that rich mercy, we stand the gap for believers, for the backslidden, so that they would stand and be returned, restored unto the Lord. Then as a consequence, we preach this gospel. Then, as a consequence, we occupy till he comes. Then, as a consequence, we're able to go forth and be a light and righteousness and be a witness. But it starts as we, his people, cried out. We are revived, changed, transformed. We have made a foundation of the word, a foundation of real truth in our lives. And we walk forth in the truth, sharp before the Lord, recognizing that we've come to that hour, like Jesus did, where the Gethsemane came where a choice had to be made, where we had to, like Jesus, say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Where cups put before us, and we say, God, if you're able, take this cup from us, but not my will, but your will be done. Jesus, recognizing the fullness of the price he would pay, still chose to do the will of the Father. 
May we be found the same, that God, I choose your will. Even at cost, I choose your will in this hour, that we might receive the reward and many lives may be led to glory, that we might reach as many as possible, see as many backsliders brought back, see as many of the lost won. We cannot allow the enemy to steal this generation. You cannot allow the enemy to steal your family, your loved ones. It's time to make a stand in the secret place, to cover your family, to know how to pray, how to be bold and strong for the Lord. This is such an hour. Recognize, see what's going on, see the acceleration, and be righteously disturbed. Go after the Lord. I believe that He's drawing closer now more than ever. And he's about to move in a very powerful way on the earth. And I want to be part of that move. And I pray that you do too. So let us be found in him because when he moves, if we're in him, in the right place, at the right time, he will use us for his glory. Amen. I pray this message has encouraged, inspired you, particularly if you're going through a trial or difficulty, to know that there is a place where you can abide in him, reside in him, and have a peace that the world cannot understand cannot take from you and that you can be of good cheer why because he's overcome the world and you know it he's overcome that trial and he's defeated and if he's defeated the trial then i could just have to stand hold fast and know that he will perform that which he said and in the midst is to walk in a joy that i can rejoice and rejoice always knowing that all things he's working for my good because i love him Oh, I pray this message has said has blessed you, encouraged you. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing because as you do, it enables the algorithms at YouTube and Google to get this video out, to reach more people, to see more backsliders brought back in. We need to be pressing forward boldly in the Lord, reaching as many, bringing them to a dependence on Jesus, to a real relationship with Jesus. I also ask you to consider joining our prayer partnership team. It's simple. You sign up by going to our website, GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com, and signing up at our partner page. It costs you nothing. If the Lord puts you in your heart to share financially, great. But to be part of our partner program costs you nothing. And this hour, we need to understand the power of prayer, the greater impact that comes as we stand and pray. I thank you for those that are praying with me to see this message have more persuasion and impact, to see more lives touched and changed and brought to a greater relationship with Jesus. I want you to know that as part of that prayer program, you are invited to our Zoom meetings where you get messages that I don't put on YouTube or anywhere else except on our partner pages. You also have access to people that are pray, well, willing to pray for you 24-7. You never know when you're going through a trial and somebody around the world suddenly is stirred by the Spirit to pray for you. All I ask is that you pray for us. And I want you to know that we're praying for you regardless. Please also consider checking out more videos in this series. More videos on The Secret Place, more videos on The Last Days, all kinds of videos that we put forth to help you live strong and live boldly for Jesus in this hour. Thank you. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Be strengthened in the Lord, knowing that Jesus is coming soon. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh in the name of Jesus. Amen.